You know, one of our goals at Harvest Church is that we live a lifestyle of community, a lifestyle of hanging around good people, a lifestyle of when we're in trouble, we have our own company to go to. Um, th there's so much that we don't realize some, sometimes that happens to us when we're in a corporate setting like this, when, when the presence of God is so strong. And again, if you're new to this, I really believe your heart saying, might not understand everything, but it seemed good. <laughs> you know, when God moves, um, you'll know it, whether it's true or not. So I'm just going to just going to introduce this topic today of choosing community and listen to this because your life depends on it. Choose community. Your life depends on it. Choose community. Your life depends on it. Now I want to go to 2 Peter 1 and verse 12 begins reading because the stakes are so high. Even though you're up to date on all this truth, you practice it inside and out. I'm not going to let up for a minute in calling you to the attention before it. This is my post. You know, some people want a different message, but on my post, God's drilling something in that he wants us to get greater than we have right now, going to a higher level than we have right now. Now, last year, do you remember what the emphasis was? reach with great expectation. And we're not just going out there, I think I'll go hand out a card. We are literally living a lifestyle that we have, who am I going to invite here today? Who needs, who needs just a positive talk or a smile or whatever? Every single week, my wife and I have that kind of testimony because we live the lifestyle of reach, bring someone. This week, uh, my wife and I were in Dick's Sporting Goods, and I'm talking about winning our world, wherever we go. There's some people say, I don't know. I, all I know is Christians. I said, well, do you go to Walmart? <laughs> Where do you go? There's going to be somebody, and we believe for divine setups, divine connections. Let me tell you why we believe in divine uh, intersections of people into our lives, because that could be the last day they're living. That could be. You know, there, there could be somebody here today that you're ready to throw in the towel and give up. But God changed things. God dealt with you individually and those who had prayer. Choose community. We don't realize the impact and importance it is. So this is my post which I've been assigned, keeping you alert with frequent reminders. And I'm sticking to it as long as I live. Tell that person next to you, you better, you better get used to his mug up there for a long time. I'm going to call my wife. I'm not going to call my wife a mug. But uh, she, she ministers to us as well. She's beautiful. Um, anyway. So... Now we go into Matthew chapter 22 and drill down into this a bit. If you'll get a hold of this scripture, you'll realize the most important things to God. And whatever is most important to God becomes most important to me. Matthew 22, 35 says, One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap Jesus with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? In other words, what's the most important word of God to you? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment is our relationship with him. Our relationship with him. Let me tell you something. When your relationship with God gets good, relationships around you start to get good 
because you're taking to your world what you got from him that other people, if they don't have him, are drawn to that. So don't think if someone makes a pass at you, it's just because of your looks. They are drawn to something on you. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> but there, there is something, something in a Christian's life, the presence of God upon a Christian's life, that we're supposed to be out in the world, salt and light. And yeah, God, God will connect us with the right people. You, but you have, a, have an eye for reaching, an eye for realizing eternity. If we really believe there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, we would have our eyes wide open. Now, getting back to sports, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. So we went in there. My wife was looking for something, and, and, and so she's looking for something, and I was looking for something. I wasn't looking for something in Dick's Sporting Goods. She had a need, but I went ahead and just said, God, is there somebody that you like me to invite or just befriend. Well, I saw a gentleman um, stocking some shelves and, and some pulled him to another thing. And I was like, that's the guy right there. That's, and, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm ready to go. And then someone t- gets, you know, gets his attention. Uh, Can you help me? And so I didn't intervene there. But he came back and he came back with a friend. So I said, well, you know, it's not hard for me. Uh, even if it's not a positive experience, I, would, I, I normally go up to them and say, hey, guys, let me ask you a quick question. Do you guys have a good church you're going to? And that, that, normally, that normally awakens the situation. And, and this one gentleman said, you know, I, I don't. And it's amazing that you said that because I'm looking for one. Now, the other one... Not so much. But he wasn't necessarily negative. It's just sort of like he dissed me. <laughs> and so, uh, does anybody know what dissed means? <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then, I'm just telling you, this is a lifestyle. I'm not asking you to go hand out cards. I'm asking you to get a revelation that there's a heaven again and hell to shun. And this, this moment in your life is the most brief moment compared to eternity. Who is he intersecting? Do we really love our family enough to pray over them and tear off blinders, ask God to send perfect laborers across their path, ask God to reign by the Spirit of God on their hearts, break up that fallow ground, God draw them, God draw them. There's someone, there's someone that you can't minister to in your family, but God knows who can Never get discouraged even when you pray over your family because God's got a perfect labor right. that knows their language and, and, and God's drawing them in to the very best life you could possibly have in Christ. Amen. So this is why it's so important. So say it with me, we live a lifestyle of reaching. And if you'll notice, when you go out the foyer doors on the left wall, is sort of like our outreach place. We have all kinds of cards for all kinds of situations. And it's so funny. I, a, lot, a lot of times, <laughs> I don't like to say this, but I run out of cards. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? And, 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 and yet, and then my wife said, you know what, I, got, I gave out my last one. Hannah, you got one? Oh, Dad, I think I got one way deep in my purse. Let me get it for you. <laughs> And, uh, and I know Joseph and, and Rachel, they, they do that as well. Um, it's a joy. And when they actually show up, it, it's amazing. And but, but, but even if that person doesn't show up, you're sowing seeds into eternity. And someone will come. When you, when, if you want someone to minister to your son, go minister to someone else's. If you want someone to minister to your daughter, go minister to someone else's and sow the seeds for it. So, then our, then our next, we reach, we bring someone, then what do we do next? We connect. What does that mean? Choose community because your life depends on it. What do I mean by community? People aren't meant to be alone. 
Let me say that again. People are not meant to be alone on an island. They're not. I, I, I hear people sometimes say, I just want to retire, and I want to, I want to get a cabin in the woods, and I just want to live off the land. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, you're not, going to lay, you're not going to survive up there long. You can't talk to bears. You can run from them. No, you're not supposed to run from them. You're supposed to just stand there. Make noise, look big. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> So, connecting is so important. It's, it's so significant. And, and sometimes my wife and I have to forget how much community we've had all over these years. You have community with your family. You have community with probably a, a career that you're in. But there's a, there's a church community that all of us need. And I thank God uh, many of us in this room have. Did you know that community, and again, I was just studying and studying on this, and it, it's proven out that community is important for your mental health. Can anybody agree, uh, relate with that? Yeah. And, and Galatians, or excuse me, Genesis 2, 18 says, and the Lord said, And the Lord said, I know, for a speaker who's out there, that's, no, that's what's known as a pregnant pause. What the heck does that mean? I don't really like that word. But anyway, that's what I was doing. Get you thinking. So on three, let's read it from the beginning. One, two, three. And the Lord God said, it is that man or woman or kids. Um, those of you who homeschool, I can't tell you how critical it is to connect them with the church, whether they're babies, kids, youth, young adults, whatever. They need socialization. They need to be around people. They need to have good experiences with people and bad experiences with people. It's part of, their, it's part of all of our development. Don't think that my wife and I love to go into certain rooms when we know there's a lot of negativity in there, but we have to go anyway. And guess what? We begin changing that room. Go and touch and care about people. Genesis 2.18, and the Lord said, Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone, so I'm going to make him a helper, comparable to him. The Amplified says, it's interesting, says, now the Lord said, it's not good or beneficial for man to be alone, I'm going to make him a helper, one who balances him. Uh, uh, most of you a lot of you don't go way back to when I was in Rhema, my wife and I, and people look at how God has helped me to be balanced, and a lot of it came through my wife. She did. She, she helped me balance out, and we complement each other, and we help each other. I'm going to read that again. Uh, it's not good or beneficial for the man or woman or, to be alone. I'm going to make a helper. If you're believing God for a mate, your helper's on the way. Command stop blocks to get out of the way. Right time, right person. One who balances him. A counterpart who's suitable, complementary for him. Interesting scriptures, right? When people are surrounded by family, friends, the church, who care enough to notice them. You know, some of you here, sometimes, if some of you here are here long enough for you to know, pa Pastor and Pastor Missy, leadership's going around to befriend people they haven't seen, or someone that might feel awkward. We're going to go in there and try to help them be comfortable. And honestly, I, I hope you take on that 
type of spirit too. And if you're a guest today, I really hope you feel this. But we're, we're, we're entering in, listen, the, our goal last year was to develop a lifestyle of reach, bring someone, right? So we don't go to point number two and leave point number one undone now. This is the evolution of how we fulfill vision. So the second part is now God's focusing on connect. Choose community. Your life depends on it. So we are around people that notice, listen to us, and, and we help people as much as we can. Find solutions to their problems. And you know what? It develops hope in them. We can't, we can't forget that someone in our family has lost hope. They don't believe things are going to get any better. You might feel that same way when you came into church today. I, I believe God's turning that around. I believe God's mending you right now because in the name of Jesus, we spoke that out. So, Hebrews, no wonder Hebrews 10, 23 says, so let's do it. Full of faith, confident that we're presentable, not just outside, presentable inside and out. How many have ever seen some very good looking, a very good looking person, but all of a sudden you got to know them and they became ugly? Yeah. Well, let's make sure, like the word says, be full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises. Is there anybody here believing God, standing on the word of God right now for something? Yeah, I'd like to see a lot of hands raised. Right now is your time to regain a firm grip if you need to. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are going to keep faith in you, proper tense that you said, whenever you pray, believe that you receive. Believe that you receive and you'll have them. Father, thank you. We have a firm grip that we believe we have received whatever people are raising their hand for right now. So we're regaining a firm grip and we're going to get in the current, the current, uh, you know, tense of faith. Faith is now. I've got it. I've got it. And then God watches over his word to perform it. He makes it good. Thank you. So let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. God always keeps his word. God always keeps his word. Goes on to say, let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Not avoiding worshiping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. We need people around us that, if we're down, they help us get back up, and they help us to move forward. And if they see something, something happening in your life that, that, you, that you go sideways, they're, they're there to help bring you back in. But what if you didn't have that type of community? The passion says, this is not the time to pull away or neglect meeting together. I'm letting that sit because I'm seeing the more, more significance out of community than I ever have before. Man, go to these fellowship times. Come out to Brave. We, we, we based these goals off of God emphasizing community. It, it, it'll, be, it'll be better than what you think. The passion says it's not time to pull away or neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. Eager to encourage, eager to urge each other onward as we anticipate the day dawning. Talking about when Jesus comes back. Let me just get through a little, little bit more. I 
A Christian community is evident by the way people treat each other. It should be. <laughs> it should be. And the local church should strive to model Christ-like attitudes. And in every statement I'm about ready to say, there's a scripture attached to it. If you're taking notes, would you like me to give you the scripture? All right, so the first thing the church is supposed to do is love one another. 1 John 4.12. We're called to encourage one another, Hebrews 3.13. We're called to spur one another to love and to good works, Hebrews 10.24. We're supposed to serve one another, Romans 15.14, excuse me, Galatians 5.13. We're called to instruct one another, not, not like Hey, I've come to instruct you on your ways. No, it's just doing life and sharing each other's uh, experiences. When I'm in conversations around here, I'm telling you what, I, I, I learn. I learn from people. I love it. Or something will all of a sudden dawn on me like I've never seen before concerning something I just heard. All right, so where are we? Serve one another? Well, instruct one another. That's Romans 15, 14. Honor one another. Honor one another. That, that theme is going to be, happen all year long. Honor. Here, you don't even have to know the definition of honor. But answer me this one question. When you speak to your kids, is it an honorable tone? Well, let me even back up there. And this is part I've had to apologize to my wife for throughout our, throughout our marriage. Is what I say was a little bit too intense. And it wasn't honorable. So even if you don't know the definition of honor, you'll know you don't speak to your wife that way. Oh. When we were shopping the other day, I don't, I don't know if I told this to you. I, got in the car and my mind went somewhere else. I'm seeing too many men out shopping with their wives 15 feet in front of them. I don't like it. Is that honorable? Hmm? I'd like to see more men open doors for ladies. No, I know there's a, there's a woke situation <laughs> that if you even dare, huh? It's very sad. I mean, we're just trying to honor you. And um, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> hey, yeah, come on. You, you, yeah. All right, so honor one another. That was Romans 12.10. Be patient. Did I miss one? That was instruct one another. Sorry. So then in, um, honor one another is Romans 12.10. You type A thing you. <laughs> or what is it? You have to have notes. You have to have, listen. I love Star Wars. I hate the sequence. It's out of order. Start at the end, of, at the beginning, and then, and of course, Joseph had to explain all of it to us. I'm like, just tell me the story. Come on. Some of you out there are just like me. If you go by a table and things are like that, that bothers me. So I got to go like this. If you're a counselor in here, I don't know what that's called, but don't call me it. Pray for me. <laughs> All right. So where am I at, guys? Honor one another, Romans 12, 10. Oh, here comes a good one. Ready? Be patient. <laughs> oh, my. Let's do that again. Be patient. That means allow God to help you when you just hit your last nerve. 
Because patience is in there. Be patient with one another and forgive one another. That's Ephesians 4.32. Bear one another's burdens. That's Galatians 6.2. Many hands make a light load. That's why it's good to be a part of a group. That's why we're collective here. We're able to do so much for so many people. Speak the truth to one another. That's Ephesians 4.25. And then the local church is the place where the Christian community can put these things in action. You know, your love walk can't be perfected unless someone just did something not in alignment with the love walk. It didn't feel good. All right. Can I, I'm just going to finish up on one thing today that will bring it home. Ready? Say it with me. We need each other. We really do. God said so. In the spring of 1953, Edmund Hillary and the, how do you say it, those who are going up to Mount Everest, the Nepalese, Nepalese, how do they say it? Nepalese. Well, who, whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so they are the guides that help you in a very, very um, detailed progression. They were working their way up Mount Everest in preparation for their historic assault on the summit. So there were two. Suddenly, Edmund Hillary, he lost his footing. He lost his footing. Going up Mount Everest. What? <laughs> what did you say? Man, yeah. Um, Mount Everest. I make up words. <clears throat> so he's, he, he, he lost his footing, but Norgay, the Nepalese, quickly grabbed him. That joined them and held it tight, keeping Hillary from falling. And I'm just going to conclude with this right now. Who in the world do you have ready to grab your rope? Stand with me, please. Community. Guys, it's not good to be alone. So we're going to talk about this. And uh, God's going to minister a lot of stuff to us concerning community. I want to thank you for coming today because you know the significance of assembling. I love you guys online for sure and there are some of you that are shut in but some of you need to come back. I believe when someone's in a shut in situation God meets their needs through virtual video and that's fine. Or times that you ha- you're out due to a sickness or whatever. But there are some that have gotten used to being home. And now, if you know, it's just not healthy for us. So come on back home. You come back with open arms and we love you enough to tell you the truth. We have all kinds of connecting opportunities in this ministry. If you go online, you'll see we've got serving groups when you get on a team I'm telling you what that's that's company when you get in trouble you can go right to those folks because you've been in the trenches with them or we've got harvest groups we've got brave groups we've got brave fellowship we've got what else do we have um what authentic groups I mean there's just a there's a place for every single one of you but the good place to start is if, if coming to church is something that sort of is last thing on your list, you might want to shift that. And you know what? Actually, my mind goes back to Dick's Sporting Goods. This particular... No, no, no. That was at another store we invited people. So my wife and I went and had to make a purchase. And there were two people. By the time we left, of course... Hey, you guys have a good church. 
One says, well, I'm Jewish. I said, well, don't you love Jesus? We do. Give us a shot. He's got kids, young kids. Parents, I commend you. I commend you, parents, for being consistent with your kids in that children's church. I, I commend you. Because you know what our greatest opposition today is for advancing God's purpose? Time. And what we give our time to. You're showing your kids that even though you're busy, you make a priority the things of God. And they're getting, did anybody get ministered to here today? Oh. Okay, yeah. Well, your kids are getting ministered to just like that with the Word of God and the presence of God's in there to minister to those kids. 30, 37 kids were filled with the Holy Spirit last week. Praise God. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll go out in your world and you'll, you'll not just go witnessing, you'll just be a witness wherever you go. When I was young, I didn't have anything to oppose the negativity coming toward me, so I yielded to it. Man, we're equipping your kids to face a dark world. And they have a community of kids in there. And then, then they get into junior high. They got a community of kids in there. And then they go to senior high. And you know, it, 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 there's a lot to say about peer pressure. Our kids are surrounded by negative peer pressure in their world all the time. Make sure they get into a positive peer pressure group in our youth. Young adults, same thing. Men, women, it's all covered, so pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for what we've heard today, and I'm going to be the first one to judge myself to see how that, how that impacts me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping all of us to interpret what we heard this morning and then apply it to our lives if you're here today every head bowed every eye closed we're in just a moment of prayer if you don't know Jesus if God forbid you were to die today do you know for sure you would go to heaven oh man you need to be able to respond immediately a yes and if you can't on the count of three I'm going to say lift up your hands if you want prayer, right where you are, I'm going to lead you in prayer so that you can be sure that no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens today or the rest of our life, we will know our last breath on earth becomes our first breath in heaven. Does that interest you? God is drawing you by the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's good to seal things up for eternity. One, two, three. Just lift up your hands. Say, you know what? That's me. I, I, I need to make a change. I need to get all in. Let's all pray this prayer together. Say, God, I believe Jesus is your son. He died on the cross for all my sin. He was innocent so I could be made right. On the third day, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I need you. I know you're alive. You're the savior of the world. And I receive you as my Savior right now. I take you as my Savior right now. Thank you. Forgive all my past in Jesus' name. I thank you for making me a whole new person. I thank you that according to the word, I've been born anew, born again in Jesus' name.